Are you looking for an AI tool that can help you read a research paper faster? Do you want to learn what is the best way to read and understand research papers? Would you also like to know how to organize and manage research papers effectively? Well then this video is for you. Hi everyone, I am Neha Agrawal. I am the founder of WiseUp and on this channel I make videos related to study abroad, job readiness, research mastery and communication skills, essentially all those areas where you need to become wiser to succeed in your career. So if any of these topics are relevant to you, you can subscribe to this channel. And now let me break down what we're going to cover in this video for you. First, we will understand how to read a research paper effectively. What are the different sections you should read first and which areas you need to pay attention to. We will also understand how is reading a research paper different for someone who's a beginner trying to read research papers for the very first time as compared to a seasoned researcher who wants to learn how to read research papers faster and more effectively. Along the way, I'll also share some AI tools with you that will help you better understand the papers. And finally, I'll share some more tools with you that will help you manage and organize your literature properly. So without further delay, let's get started. So when you open a research paper to read, the first thing that you should read is the title. The title of a research paper usually contains the novelty of the work or what is something new that has been done in that research paper. At the same time, it also covers the topic on which the research paper is based on. So just by reading the title, you will get an understanding of the overall content of the paper. And then based on that, you can decide whether the topic is relevant to you and the paper is worth reading. Or if you feel it's not relevant, then you can discard the paper right at this point. Now, once you've read the title, the next thing you should read is the journal name, because this will give you an understanding of the overall reputation of the article. Because the journal in which the article was published will determine its credibility. Now, usually for different fields of research, for example, if I belong to the science and engineering field, there are certain publishers which are reputed. So if my paper is published in any of these journals from these publication houses, then I can be sure that at least it's a credible paper. And if I read the information here, then I'm getting credible information from this paper. So for example, some of the publishers which are famous in the science and engineering fields are Elsevier, Springer, IEEE, Taylor and Francis, Nature, Science, Sage, etc. So once you've read the journal name, quickly skim through the author name, affiliation and the date of publication. By looking at the date of publication or the year of publication rather, you will understand how old or how recent the paper is. That will give you an understanding whether you're reading latest information or an information that is slightly dated. Now, by reading the name of the authors and their affiliation, you will understand where is this research coming from. For example, by reading the affiliation, you will understand whether the research is coming from some reputed universities, from reputed laboratories, and which country has this research taken place in. Again, all these factors determine the overall credibility of the paper. Now, once you've read the title, the journal name, the name of the authors, affiliation, date, etc., now we come to the main content of the paper. So if you're a seasoned researcher, start by reading the abstract and the conclusion first. The abstract usually contains information on the background, the research gap, objective of the study, methodology, and even the results and discussion. While the conclusion contains more information about the results, any limitation of their study, and how their study can be taken forward. So just by reading the abstract and the conclusion, you will get an understanding of the entire content of the paper if you are a seasoned researcher, if you belong to that field and you've already read multiple research papers in that area. But if you are a beginner, I would highly recommend that you start by reading the introduction section first. This is because the introduction section contains the entire background of that research area. And just by reading the introduction, you will get an entire fundamental understanding of that research topic on which the paper is based. Once you've read through the introduction, then you can go on to reading the abstract and the conclusion, just like the seasoned researchers. Now at this stage, if you come across any technical terms again and again, which are unfamiliar to you, then you can use the help of certain AI tools. Both chat PDF and SciSpace have the option where you can upload the research paper that you're reading and then ask questions to the paper and the AI tool will respond to you. For example, if I upload this particular paper and ask, 
what does super hydrophobic mean? Then I will get a response from the tool as to what is the definition of super hydrophobicity. Now while you are reading the introduction, you should try and identify what is the research gap of the study and what is the objective that they are working on. For seasoned researchers, if you don't want to go through the entire introduction, then one thing you can do is you can ask these AI tools like SciSpace and ChatPDF to also summarize the introduction for you. Otherwise, what I will recommend is that you go towards the last few paragraphs of the introduction section because that is where usually you will find the research gap and the objective of the study. So in this way, you can complete the introduction section. Now once you are done with the introduction, we move on to the next part which is the materials and methods section. Now for new readers, I would highly recommend you go through the materials and methods section of a research paper very carefully because this will give you an understanding of the process that they have followed to conduct their experiments. At the same time, it's going to build your visualization ability as to how an experimental procedure is taking place, what are all the materials that are used, the equipment and the procedure that is followed. At the same time, try to do one thing. While you are reading the materials and methods section, try to locate the illustration for that because usually the methodology section is also illustrated in the form of a diagram. And then try to correlate your visualization with the information that is given in that illustration or diagram. This will further enhance your visualization ability and will help you better understand the research paper. For seasoned researchers, if you've already read research papers from the same field, following a very similar methodology, then you don't have to read the methodology section again and again. What I would recommend is that simply go through the diagram or the illustration that they have presented. Just by looking at that, you will get a complete understanding of the methodology that they have followed. In case later on you need to look at more details of the methodology, you can come to this section. But for now, just looking at the diagram should work for you. Now, once we're done with the methodology section, we move on to the next part, which is results and discussion. Now for both beginners and seasoned researchers, I would recommend you read the results and discussion section very carefully. And whatever results and discussions they have reported, try to match it with the data that they have presented in their graphs, tables, figures, etc. Also when reading the results and discussion section, don't just accept everything that is written there. but read it with a pinch of salt. <laughs> I mean to say that try to read the results and discussion section critically. Whatever results and discussion that they have reported, try to analyze whether are they even answering the research questions that they had stated before. Are they meeting their objective and are they filling up the research gap that they had stated in the beginning. When you read their results and discussion, also try to think about are there any limitations in their results or discussion that they have reported. Because see, most of the time the researchers are going to show their research paper in a very positive light. It is your responsibility to find out if there is any loopholes in their research or if their research is not up to the mark and still has scope for further improvement. Now in this way, you would have completed reading the entire research paper. And once you've done that, you will understand whether this particular research paper is important to you or not. If it is important, please make sure you highlight important parts in the research paper. Because reading a research paper roughly takes you 15 to 20 minutes. And you don't want yourself coming back to this paper and spending those 15 and 20 minutes again and again. So if you highlight the important parts, this will ensure that if you need to revisit this paper again, just by reading the highlighted parts, you will be able to understand the entire summary of the paper. In fact, at this stage, you can again use AI tools like chat PDF or SciSpace to summarize the paper for you. Another important thing that you should do at this stage is to manage and organize your research papers effectively. Because later on when you're conducting your research or when you sit down to write a research paper, if you don't categorize your research papers properly in folders or make notes of your research papers, then you're going to have a very difficult time in summarizing or collating all that information. So right from the beginning, when you start working on your research, it's important to categorize as well as make notes of your research paper. Now for this note making and as well as organization of your research papers, there are two softwares I would highly recommend. One is Hypernotes and second is Notion. Both these platforms allow you to make notes effectively, categorize them into different folders, at the same time collaborate with your fellow researchers. 
and with this i have shared everything that i know about reading research papers effectively i hope you found the information useful and will be able to apply it in future whenever you are reading research papers now if you wish to learn in detail how to write a research paper and what are the different ai tools that you can use to help you get published then you can join me for my course on a to z of research paper writing in this course we cover everything starting from how to choose a research topic to writing each and every section of a research paper perfectly and finally choosing the best journals for publication at the end of the course you will also receive a certificate of completion that will boost your cv for jobs in higher education to know more the link is in the description and in the pinned comment and now Thank you so much for watching this video and I wish you have a successful research journey ahead.